All right, got me a brand new Taurus GX4 here to test and review today. As you probably know, this is Taurus's entry into the micro compact double stack 9mm game here, following in the footsteps of the SIG P365, as have many other manufacturers. You know, this would compete with Ruger Max 9, obviously the P365, Springfield Hellcat, and guns of that manner. Comes with two flush fit 11 round magazines only i thought it was kind of cool i didn't even know these came with this obviously it's going to have all your paperwork warranty information and whatnot you do have two different size back straps i have the smaller one in there i believe it is because i have kind of smaller hands uh, but it does come with two different sizes so you can set it up for your taste but i thought this little keychain thing here the model of the gx4 here was pretty cool but this is actually a takedown tool too you see that little tang sticking out there that's what you would use to take the gun down here you got to turn that to pop the slide off and break her down um, i'm going to do compare videos of this against the max 9 and the p365 and the hellcat when i get it and whatnot but i just want to say right off the bat at least for me in my hands this thing feels excellent in the hands uh, this texturing is amazing it really gives you a good grip but it's not like sharp or anything to where it's going to like rub you raw i mean maybe after a few hundred rounds but 100 rounds is not going to be any issue at all so give me a really good grip on there uh, the ergonomics for me are just awesome um really like the sights on this as far as like micro compacts go you got the blacked out rear and the white dot on the front uh this thing is just like stupid steady i know the camera's not focusing right now but that's just one-handed 15 yards back there on those bowling pins which are uh, smaller than a headshot so this thing is just rock steady for me. Can't wait to shoot it. Um, I think it's going to be awesome. Um, you saw the sight picture there. You can drift the rear sight for windage. So if you're shooting left or right with your particular load, you can address that and get a 0 to 100% there. Uh, this thing has an awesome trigger on it for a micro compact. Like so. so that's you, know, you got your trigger safety there, obviously. No manual safety. Slide stop here is not ambi. Um, there's like almost no take up that's all the take up you have and then other than being slightly heavy um it is a super crisp break especially for a striker very crisp break and no play no travel that i can notice i think that might have something to do with the heavy uh weight trigger which by the way i've read that some of these come with the triggers as heavy as like nine pounds some come at seven uh, but the general consensus is that after shooting it for a while, a couple, or you know, 100 rounds or a little more, um, the trigger gets lighter and lighter, which I have kind of noticed that since day one. It felt like I had about, geez, I don't know, 8-pound trigger maybe. Right now it feels like it's down in the mid-sixes after just dry firing it a few times. So these are known to come with tight triggers from the factory, but they loosen up rather quickly. So difficult to say what the end weight on the thing will be after a few hundred rounds but it is a little heavy off the gate um but super crisp there's no like squishy you know creep as i call it like there is with glocks and the mmp series and whatnot um even the the max 9 you know there's discernible creep there but this just breaks okay i'm gonna pull through now no movement whatsoever before the break and then the reset on it is really short and excellent for a micro compact right there and then it's already on the wall again i love the trigger on this other than it's a little heavy but as i said it's already lighter now that i've dry fired it probably 20 30 times than it was straight out of the box right now it feels like about a six and a half pound trigger which i can manage with that but it'll likely lighten up even further over time I've seen some reports of people getting four and a half pound trigger pulls after a couple hundred rounds. But even as is, with that being a little stiff at about six and a half currently, it feels to me, um, it's still with that excellent break. It's a non issue. It doesn't cause me to flinch or anything like that when it goes because it's just a perfect crisp break. It feels like a single action hammer fired, like a 1911 break. It's, it's real crisp and zero creep. Honestly, don't even know how they achieve that with a striker fire micro.
All right, but we'll get to shooting here. I'm gonna run, I got 80 rounds, 80 of this uh, LAX. This is new production. A lot of people say this stuff's junk and whatnot, but it's usually cut, you got the remanufactured or the reloads. Uh, this is new production, 124 grain. Um, if it doesn't like it for some reason, I have other options that I also don't <laughs> like particularly too much, but this is what we'll start with as long as it's trouble free. Uh, go out to the target there, I'll shoot from a distance of 7 yards, 21 feet, which is your standard self-defense scenario distance. They say most self-defense shooting is 7 yards. So we'll go over there first, see where point of impact is to see if I need to uh, either adjust the sight or correct my aim until I feel like adjusting the sight. See where point of impact is so I know where to aim at all these plates. We'll knock down some of these plates. I will come back here 15 yards, like I said, to that very back row. Those bowling pins are only about as wide as my hand there, which my face is wider than my hand. Um, so those are smaller than headshots at 15 yards. So if we can knock those down somewhat reliably, uh, then that speaks volumes for the pistol. I usually when I start out with a brand new pistol I haven't fired, I pull a little right because I don't know what to expect for that first shot, but I'm gonna try not to do that. All right, so pretty much dead on. Just uh, seems to be about a center hold for me. It's going right where that white dot is. Yeah, I do like it. It's a pretty good shooter. So that trigger weight, it is getting me a little bit, causing me to pull a shot every once in a while there. It's a little heavier than I'd like. Like I said, it feels like six and a half pounds to me. It might be a little heavier than that. It feels heavier out there shooting it. So hopefully that does loosen up over time like they're supposed to, like I have reportedly read. By the way, these mags do have the sight window on the back there, so you can see how many you got in there. Um, so I don't know how well I'm going to do from back here, but we're going to give it a shot at 15 yards at those pins and whatnot back there. As I said, that is smaller than a headshot at 15 yards. So I'm going to start out 11 plus 1, so I'm going to have full mag plus 1 in the chamber just as you would carry it. I'm not sure why, but back there, I'm assuming it's me because it's dead on on our target there. When I'm missing, I'm missing bug trying to fly in my mouth. I'm missing just off to the left edge, so I'm trying to correct that. Did it again. I don't know why. Okay, so that's 15 yards, smaller than a headshot. Again, those pins are about as wide as my hand there. You know, I'll take my time and get the fundamentals right. Headshot every time at 15 yards, no problem. Ah! I thought I was out, but no, we got a jam there. Looks like that might be an empty case. It failed to extract, I'm not sure. That's exactly what that was. That is that LAX stuff, but a bulge on the primer there too. Pop a few more in here and try that again. Now I gotta rapid fire the crap out of this thing.
So, I mean, generally I don't have any problem with this stuff. It's definitely low tier as far as ammo goes. I mean, it's about the cheapest brass you can get in new production. So, you know, if we were running Winchester Federal Remington, that might not have happened. Could also just be because the gun, you know, it's new, still breaking in and whatnot. But, try again. That time I used the slide release, it didn't feed forward all the way. It's catching up on them. <laughs> you can see when I rapid fire, I definitely pull low. Let's try this again. I wonder if uh, pushing on that mag or not matters. pushed up on it and it fed so this time I won't push up on it oh dummy now the re <laughs> release is sticking on me I don't know if fed that time now generally in a self-defense scenario I'd, I would always recommend pulling the slide and we didn't have an issue pulling the slide. We're only having an issue hitting the slide release. So um, I'll just use the slide from here on out. <sighs> See if that makes a difference. I would like to note. I would like to note, even though I know you guys are going to yell at me for this. It says straight out of the box and this thing was pretty dry. So I'm sure some lube would help. Now personally, I do that as a test. I actually do that pretty much all the time, and you guys just aren't aware of it because I never make a notation of it unless I do have an issue with a new firearm. Um, I always run them straight out of the box and dry because it's a good, uh, well, obviously every pistol will run better lubricated. It's a good test for, like, uh, you know, worst-case scenario, a reliability test, like, I don't know, you know, shit hit the fan kind of scenario. What if you don't have lube and you're out in dry desert conditions, whatever. You know, it'll kind of show you which guns will run under no, no matter any circumstances compared to others that won't um, so I would say this one's going to be one that likes to stay wet which is not a problem at all when I you know on my carry guns I keep them wet for best case scenario so uh, but just want to make that note that this one is completely dry so that is likely again we are using the cheap about the cheapest brass case you can get so that could be playing into it you know a little bit or it may not be playing into the equation at all it could just be because this thing is completely dry Try to slide release again. Also, a lot of times I hold it sideways just to show that I'm using the slide release because typically I'll switch back and forth throughout a review video to test both ways of racking the new round. Uh, but I'll tip it like this, which makes it harder. I tip it to show it. It makes it harder for it to feed against gravity, so that could be affecting it some. But again, it's also kind of a good test. Worst case scenario. And that time it fed. I mean, it seems like it's running better, too, even though it's freaking dry, so. Let's see if I can show you guys that, that this thing is bone dry real quick. So, yeah, there's just, uh, <laughs> there's nothing in there. Like, maybe the rod there, it looks a little glossy, so I think that has a little oil, but, like, the rails and everything are completely bone dry. And especially when you're Cerakoted like this, that does create extra friction. So um, you definitely, you probably don't want to run a Cerakote slide 100% dry. Everything in here is dry as well. So that's probably why we're having this, that, what, two or three hangups we had there. Is because I ran, I ran her completely dry, but on purpose for the reasons... I explained, which you may or may not agree with, but it's a little test I like to do. That about does it though. Um, I do really like this thing, just definitely keep it lubed, and it seemed like it started doing better for us there too, so I mean obviously break-ins helping too. I think put another hundred rounds to this thing, and it'd probably be flawless, completely dry anyways. Um, 
I was shooting faster than what I could stay on target with, as you guys saw there, but that's because I was trying to run it super fast to see if I could, you know, replicate the issues like I did. But as you saw earlier, slow down to a comfortable yet still fast pace, uh, what I know I can keep the gun on target. And I mean, I'm rapid firing pretty decent and staying on target, no problem, as long as I'm not, as long as I'm not ripping them off as fast as I can. Um, you know, we proved that it's plenty accurate for 15 yard headshots as long as you do your part, which is pretty good for a micro pistol. Um, so I have nothing but praise for this thing. Like I said, the Ergos, I love them. I really like the trigger. I like the sights on it. Um, there's really nothing I don't like about this gun. I just wish we didn't have those few uh, cough-ups, which again, 99% of you guys are going to blame because I didn't lube it. But like I said, I have my reasons for testing guns out in that way to see which ones will run 100% dry and which ones will not. And again, the Cer uh, Cerakote is slide there, especially with it, the Cerakote being internal as well as we saw when I broke it down. Uh, that certainly doesn't help with running it dry either. So even after wearing that down some, it, this, I, I really do think this thing would run 100% dry if I needed it to after break in, getting it wore in a little bit. But I don't carry them that way. It's just something I do, like I said, for like a worst case scenario reliability test. And I think this thing would pass it after break in. Uh, but she's coming home and getting lubed and it'll stay lubed from here on out. Uh, but yeah, so I have nothing but great things to say about this pistol. Um, I'm actually going to have a hard time letting this one go. If I do, I'm thinking about keeping this as my carry. Currently, I uh, carry a Taurus G2. Um, this is obviously one less round, but it's uh, a decent amount smaller, more compact, and lighter. Uh, but I buy, sell, trade a lot to keep videos and new reviews coming for you guys, but I might have to try to hang on to this one. And like I said, I'll have comparison videos coming up, compared to the Max 9, Hellcat when I get it, the P365 that we have, so stay tuned for that. If you guys want to get yourself any products you see me use in my videos, steel targets, paper targets, target stand, earmuffs, shooting bag, and more. Links for all that in the description. Appreciate you stopping by today, and I hope to catch you on the next one.